Hey everybody, it's your friend Sarmit here, and we're back with another episode of Kingdoms Reborn. I hope you've had a fantastic and amazing day today. And this one, I want to get to the next age. We are ready to achieve Enlightenment Age, so we want to do that. I also took over another territory right here. We conquered and raised it, and we are currently in the midst of raising this one over here. See, we got quite a few troops in there when we're working on uh, getting that one taken care of. I also want to show off a couple more things that I neglected to show off in the last episode that we researched. Uh, one of them being quick build. I have this new little area right in here where we have a bunch of houses, mostly. I wanted to increase our population, so uh, I went ahead and built a couple. So what you got to do for the quick build. So if we might go back to our tech tree here. Quick build, it's right here. We just got that. So we got that. So you can click on a building. Here you go, you have Control B as the hotkey for Quick Build. And it does exactly what it sounds like. So we have our house here, nothing there. And you can go ahead and hit Control B and a Quick Build. So you can do that pretty quickly. You can queue up a bunch of things. And it just takes your money. So if we have the money, you're good to go. Uh, one thing I'm not certain of, if it does take resources. So this says currently needing 10 out of 10 wood. And we're at 168. And if we build it, it's, we're still at 168, so I don't think that's going to take up any of our wood, which is pretty handy. Quick build is nice. You don't have to have your workers to take their time to build the buildings. You can just quick build it as long as you got the money to do so. And let's go ahead and get our enlightenment age. There's a couple of things I want to get into here right away as soon as we do. Uh, that glass work. So we talked about the magic mushroom farms in our last episode needing glass. So we had to import those and it wasn't that big of a deal, but it'd be cool to make our own. Let's grab that enlightenment age. All right, now we have sand mine policy making. Well, what does this do? Unlocks policy office that can be upgraded for various global bonuses. Hmm, I wanna check that out, we'll grab that. We have the school, and this is going to give plus 70% science points for surrounding houses. The effect doesn't stack, good to know. And then logistics sender, haul specific resources within the radius to its delivery target in 40 unit bulk. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, spy nest, we can go ahead and spy on uh, the opponents around town here. And then we have coffee roaster too, pretty cool. I don't think we have coffee beans though, so that's kind of irrelevant without that. So let's go ahead, grab the logistics and let's go for sand mine and school as well. And it looks like we got a couple other things unlocked. Uh, we have the glassworks ready to go. Uh, we're at 4,000 science points, so we don't have infinite that we can just click on all sorts of things like we could before. So let's just go with that for now. And then let's go for budget adjustment as our next one. And then we'll get into that. Choose an era bonus, rationalism or romanticism. Plus one science boost for each 2% happiness above 80, and then plus one town attractiveness for each house level five plus. Um, let's go for the uh, romanticism in this one. Choose another era bonus, okay? Protectionism and free thoughts. Plus 20% luxury resources productivity, doubles luxury resource import fee, and plus 0.5% science boost for each trading post port company in the world. Let's go for three thoughts. And we got card removal. So we can remove whatever cards from our deck that we want, and then we won't pull them when we draw our hands. Logistics Sender, let's buy it. Sand mine, glass breaker, school, all sorts of things. We're gonna buy it all. So we got our school, let's start with that. We have our new little area right here. I do have libraries in here, right here, uh, but we'll get this school in here as well. Just, uh, you know, extra science coming in. We'll go ahead and get that guy there. And I am uh, gonna go ahead and quick build that one. 5,000 coins for that one though. That it's expensive. So great, we have our school up there giving additional science points. I definitely want to grab another school here for our different areas. We'll go ahead and we'll fill a couple of those in here. There it is. We just got to find a good spot for these. We might have to have more than one. I did not take into consideration the schools and uh, other buildings like that when I was constructing our neighborhoods. Maybe I should have. So we got a couple of schools on the way. Let's check out our sand mine. Extract sand from beach or river. Sand can be used to make glass. So of course we've got our little area over in here. It looks like we can go just perfectly down in here. We'll get one of those started right there. And then of course we need the glass smelter. And uh, it looks like we can get away with having that right there. So let's go ahead and do that. We do have the warehouse right here as well. We have plenty of room in that thing too. So these guys will get built up. Now let's check out policy office. Enact policy upgrades, whatever that means. So we gotta find a good spot. Let's go back up over in here. We have a little bit of room going on and uh, I think we'll just tie it in right here. We are waiting for this great long haul to get created. It's taken a lot of resources uh, and it takes a lot of money to quick build. I don't have 40,000 to quick build that. So we're still waiting on that. We can hopefully see that in this episode. 
but our policy office is good to go. Upgrade national pride, upgrade economic hegemony, and upgrade trade routes control. So let's see what national pride says. Plus 5% city attractiveness. That's pretty good. Per level. Look at that. So there's multiple levels we can do. Uh, economic plus 3% production bonus. That's pretty good. And then we have minus 2% trade fee for trade route control. Oh, and it looks like we raised quest B. So we'll get our warriors back and we'll go ahead and probably claim that land. Looking great. Let's go ahead and grab upgrade national pride plus 5% city attractiveness. Cool. We got that. And let's zoom out here just a smidge and let's grab some new land. So we have our forest province right here that we just took from quest B. Uh, iron ore deposit here, which would be great to grab. So let's hit that up. And then we're going to continue to work our way a little bit over here. So there is a limit to how far away from your initial starting area you can go. Let's see if we can zoom out here. So this is our initial province. You can go seven away, just so you know. Uh, we're getting kind of close there, so I wanted to bring that up. Here's our next place, Kuganu. We're going to go ahead and set to conquer that one. We, of course, need to get our troops in there. Go ahead and get that started. And I want to buy a couple of pieces of land around there as well. And it looks like we do have some coal up here, which would be great, but I'm out of money. So we'll just wait for a little bit. All of these little new territories are going to be providing some income for us. So that's going to be nice as well. We got that all going on now. 86% happiness looking great. So our city attractiveness there is 94. So we got that buff from our policy office. Another thing that we got in the last episode that I forgot to even show off was the shrubbery right here. Now there's no icon for this yet, but it increases the surrounding appeal by five within five tile radius. So for a hundred coins, we're gonna go ahead and grab this guy. And the reason why I leave the one little space in between my houses is for this reason right here. The shrubberies fit quite nicely right in there. Uh, we should be able to hold shift and it doesn't go away. So we can build multiple ones there. And you can see as we place it down, appeals 105, 110, and it does stack. So you can keep going like that. So these all these spaces in between here, I like to fill with shrubberies. Just really give it good uh, attractiveness in the city with these shrubberies like that. There are a couple of other things that will benefit city attractiveness. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and do a couple shrubberies in there. I'll have to go through and uh, fill those in a little bit. I'm not going to drag you along with all that. That'd be a little bit much. I did realize that I was pushing our laborers a little bit too far. And what I mean by that is our job priority. We didn't have any laborers. We didn't have any builders. So it is winter time currently. So farms and fruit gatherers aren't going to be happening. So that's going to be an extra 101 people out of this. So we're doing okay. If we look at it that way. But if we go to the bottom here, we, we are filled out. When I looked before, and the reason why I wanted to build that new neighborhood was because we were having a couple of zeros out of whatever the number was. So we had to uh, increase it a little bit. And now we have this nice little neighborhood going on over in here. And we can, of course, build some more farms up in here. Build this whole thing into farms probably is what I'll end up doing. Or at least a vast majority of it. I did also put in an additional forester here to keep on top of our wood. And I was considering deleting this one. But we're still producing 104 wood out of this forester. So I decided to keep it in there for now. This one apparently is even better than this forester. I'm not really sure how that works but uh, it's doing great. So yeah, I'm gonna leave that one there for now. And of course, we're still making uh, some honey and whatnot with our beekeeper here, and I wanna keep that going as well. Next thing up is our logistics center. Haul specific resources from within the radius to its delivery target. We have a furniture workshop here that's a little bit a ways from some trees. So let's go ahead and put one of these in. We have to put the specific resource within the radius to its delivery target so we're going to go ahead and put our logistics guy i want to try it out over in here so of course if we're going to be making furniture that's going to be with wood so go ahead and plop that down 600 coins we'll go ahead and build it up real quick choose resource types that will be carried by the workers okay so we want to go ahead and find wood so go ahead and select that then we need to set the delivery target and we're going to go ahead oh we can't do this directly so delivery point must be storage building or a market there is a warehouse right here. So we're going to go ahead and click that and it should be all set up. So the a little bit of wood will be able to go over here. 
and then it'll be a closed access for a furniture workshop to be supplied with its wood that it needs. Uh, oh, we do have our budgets now. So if we go back up to our tech tree, we did just unlock budget adjustment. So this is going to unlock the ability to adjust workplaces budget level. Increasing the budget level leads to higher effectiveness and job happiness, but increases the building upkeep. We're sitting at about 2200 income per round. What I'd like to do anyways is each building that has the ability to change the budget, I like to increase that budget. Look at the job happiness change. So we have currently 90 from 70. So pretty good. And it's only 12 additional coins. We're still doing great. If you hold shift when you click this, it will set that up for every building that is of that type. So like all of our furniture workshops since I held left shift are now at budget max. Again, here's our mead maker. Hold left shift, click that up. Everything is going to adjust. And I'll probably go through and do that for most everything just to increase the happiness. I mean, why wouldn't you? Uh, we have plenty of money. It's not that big of a deal. And uh, better happiness is just all the better. So that's a great little thing. And it looks like we did conquer that province that was over in here. So now we get to raise it. So let's go ahead and set these guys back up. I kind of like that you can set these and forget these as long as your probability of winning is pretty good. So you can set those up and just let them go. Oh, now that we are at the next level too, we can upgrade our town hall. But ooh, 8,000 coins is a lot. So I guess we're going to hold up for that. But I want to do that for sure is upgrade our town hall, uh, our train units. So we do have a couple more open slots. So we are losing units, of course, from doing all of our fighting. We'll have to do a couple more peeps to make up for those guys that we lost. We don't have enough iron bars for our berserkers. So we have to hold up for that or we go ahead and do gold. But I think it would be a good idea to get a couple more irons going on here. We do have plenty of coal. Uh, we have some iron ore that isn't refined into bars yet, which is something we've been selling quite a bit of lots of exporting going on getting us a little bit of that extra money but i think we should get into the iron smelter here so we do have the one let's go ahead and grab a few more at least one go iron smelter and i want to bring it up kind of over in here i am doing a little bit of an industry area right in here it's just outside the range of all these houses so it's Great spot. And of course, I've been using stone roads for all this new stuff too. Trying to keep the best roads going on and uh, quicker traveling and all the better and all the good logistics stuff. Uh, let's see, three immigrants. Yep, we're going to take those people and then let's grab a productivity book. Excellent. And we're sitting at 436 out of 484 population. So we have a little bit of wiggle room left, which is great. Another thing that I'm kind of working on is this little area over in here. Uh, we did this kind of toward the end of the last episode. Got our forester going over in here. Uh, and then a beekeeper as well. I'm kind of thinking that maybe we want to do another forester over here. Just kind of make this area a really big wood industry. And we'll have another one right there. And they are comboing off each other, which is great. On this little peninsula, I added in a couple more wheat farms. Just to make sure that we're doing great with food. We're sitting pretty nice right now. I want to keep that up. Uh, we do have a lot of wheat though. And we could, of course, change that wheat into bread and beer. So let's, those are a couple things we probably want to look out for here. Let's go ahead and find... Oh, here is that card removal that we achieved. Remove a card from the draw deck. I'm going to not take that. We have a hauling services. We got a beer brewery and a productivity book to use. Let's go ahead and put that book in the Forester. And we do have our hauling services. Workers use carts to haul resources to fill building inputs or clear outputs. So there's a couple spots where I would like to put in another hauling service. We only have the one. So let's kind of bring that up over in here where we have kind of our mines and stuff going on. Uh, we have the other one right in here. You can see that we've, we're capturing a, a few things, which is pretty good. But I want to put one up over in here as well. Kind of capture a little bit more with that. And then we have that beer brewery that we also got. So let's go ahead and pop another one down. I'll probably go over here take advantage of this little space i'll probably expand our housing out this way and then i'll probably push this forester back out just so that we uh, are able to achieve as much wood as possible maybe i'll go ahead and get it started even and maybe we could even put a forester back there and be ready for uh, our expansion when we do get there which will happen here pretty quickly i would think so yeah we're looking great right now uh, let's go ahead and check on our raising over here and it looks like we're doing okay it look, we're gonna need some backup for sure we're getting really close to having that 8,000 we needed to upgrade our town uh, so oh we got it uh, let's go ahead and train some units i want to do the units first let's grab a couple of swordsmen and then as soon as we hit that 8,000 we'll upgrade that town hall and then we'll be able to take advantage of our company's act that we've had just sitting here for quite a while now 
looks like our sand mine and our glass melter is good to go. Excellent. So we are now producing our own glass. Let's see if we have anything else in stock. We got the 20. That's from when we ordered it before. Uh, we haven't completed anything, it looks like, just yet. We are using coal over here. Okay, that's good to know. And then a sand, of course. And then while we're here, let's, of course, upgrade all these. But uh, keep in mind, too, there's certain buildings, like these two right here. These are taking seven people each. So that's a lot. That's a lot of workers. So let's go ahead and double check on our job priority and make sure that we have enough workers. So look at this. Employed 309, 316. And it does look like everything is filled out with the exception of our tailor right here. And that would be what's missing. We do have 23 builders, which is great. We want to have builders. We want to have some laborers. Uh, and currently, this is all automatic. If you check this, you can dictate how many you want. I'm going to leave it automatic. So we have 14 people working over here, and that's quite a few. So let's knock a couple of these back just by hitting that down arrow and leave it eight total down from 14. All right, so we have quite a few science points. Let's go ahead and start working on our next little tree here. I want to get to colonization. And once we get to it, I'll talk about what it does. But it's a fun little thing that we can do. So we'll check that out once we get there. And uh, we we're just kind of waiting around for that 8,000 coins, which we just got. So let's go ahead and upgrade our town hall to level four. Research your way to the next era to unlock the town hall upgrade. Town hall is level four. Receive a spy center. Unlock more special cards in the card vendor. Ooh, we have to check that out. We have the ability to set delivery targets. So that's going to be uh, an important thing to do if we have to travel distances uh, when we're bringing something in. Uh, so let's go ahead and put our company's act card in. Minus 2% trade fee for each trading company. So we're going to go ahead and plop that in. And then we should be bringing in a little bit more money from that. Spy Center, engage in offensive espionage or counterintelligence. And it's a free building, so let's go ahead and grab this guy. I will put this guy... Let's put it in line over here. We might as well. It's kind of been our spot lately. We'll get that guy built up, and we'll check that out. Reveal Spy Nest. So if you were playing with somebody, they are able to put Spy Nest in your town, and that's how you'd find him with the Spy Center here. You can see counterintelligence there. Plan Seal, Kidnap, Terrorism, Nest. The upkeep is 30. Spy Effectiveness is 100. Counterintelligence is 200. Uh, gain more money from Spy Nest. Upgrade Spy Effectiveness. Steal, Kidnap, Terrorism, Spy Nest become more effective. Upgrade Counterintelligence. Espionage on our cities becomes less effective. So we don't have any Spy Nest right now. So this thing isn't going to be doing anything with that. We'll check that out later and we'll see what the Spy Nest do. To get to the next age, the Industrial Age right here, we need about 60 more houses at level 6. So if we click on this, Here's our house level six. We are currently there because we have at least three types of tier one luxuries and at least three types of tier two luxuries. So you can see here we got clothes going on, we got some candles, and we got those magic mushrooms. So because we set that up a little bit early, we are benefiting from that right now. So we do need a little bit more mead, candles, and mushrooms to meet the demand. With more houses that we get there, of course, we're going to need more and more of those goodies. So let's go ahead. We have our card here. We have, uh, let's go grab this immigrant one. Let's grab candle maker. We need a school too, so we'll grab that. And there we go. We got a couple of the things we needed. So let's get that mushroom farm going right there. And let's see if we can get another one. I think the space will work right where we are here, hopefully. And it's a little bit off, unfortunately. So we'll go ahead and put this one down here, and then we'll be good to go with that. Research completed. Uh, let's go ahead and get our school put in. Uh, let's put this guy over in here and take advantage a little bit more of these couple extra buildings that are right here get that guy going and then we have our candle maker that we want to include as well and we're getting a couple of those goodies over here as far as like the the apiary goes beekeeper so we'll be close by to take advantage of that now by building all this stuff over here of course we are hurting the efficiency of this beekeeper so we uh, will want to build another one. Look at that, we were ready to go even. And we'll get this guy going right there. Excellent. And then this guy is wanting another warehouse up over in here. So let's get that. And we can't quick build that. So we'll just get that guy like so. Looking good. Let's go ahead and grab these immigrants that are here. Five immigrants join. I love that card. Super nice thing to get. And uh, yeah, we need to do a little bit more uh, road upgrade. It looks like over in here. But we're doing pretty great in many other aspects of our town. Our luxury goods are looking good. We mentioned that. We got a couple of tier two buffed a little bit. Looks like we're still needing a little bit more furniture to stay on top of that. But we do have three other luxury goods that are able to compensate for the weakness of our furniture industry. Food's looking fantastic. I would like to turn more of this wheat into bread. We're going to need some more bakeries. And uh, we got a little bit of glass going on now. Super good. 
and clay's getting a little bit short so we're gonna need another clay pit or another option of course is to upgrade the one we currently have I'm gonna go ahead and put two more worker slots in this clay pit and we'll see how that adjusts for us it looks like our medicinal herbs are doing great medicine's great stone tools is doing good but they are in the negative there you can see we're about 150 negative uh, we do want iron tools over stone tools so that's another thing that i'm gonna have to try and get into uh, so we mentioned getting those let's go ahead and grab medicine maker while we're here we'll go taylor we're gonna grab a couple more of these things here's the example of where this card system is kind of a pain in the butt it's really annoying when i want to build a specific thing like a blacksmith and i have to shuffle through all of these different cards now normally this is the first time in the game where it's kind of been an issue uh so it's a little bit of a thing when you get the wild cards it's not that big of a deal because then you can just search for it there it is blacksmith ready to go so let's get another one of these guys going and um, you know what i think there was something i forgot to look at down over here and that was with the additional cards that we got the universal cards and i believe the stave church is a new thing that was here that's really cool then we have the resource outpost extract resources from a foreign province this is really good i'm excited to show you that guy and if we look down over in here happy bread day oh standing army all sorts of things in here now oh yeah this is where we get the cocoa and the coffee breeder and cotton on oh, oh here's the grapes so remember we got the winery and i was like what do about grapes let's grab that uh that's gonna take up a half our money we're kind of hurting a little bit for our money we have to check that out then we have our grape farms that we're gonna have to set up somewhere uh, so we have a lot of food over in here but we do know that we have quite a bit of land up in this area that we can utilize for our farms so i think that's what i'll do i'm gonna go ahead uh, in between episodes here i'm gonna fill this in with a lot of farms we'll get some grapes going and then we'll get some winery going but i think we'll talk about all of that in the next episode thanks for coming and hanging out with me i hope you enjoyed this episode of kingdoms reborn have a fantastic and amazing rest of your evening day or night